good morning in this session we are going to discuss about uh, different control actions like uh, proportional control action derivative control action and integral control action so in the last session on uh, second order systems we have seen the performance of the plant that a second order system how it is going to respond to different kinds of uh, inputs this is a typical block diagram of uh, a closed loop control system where there is a plant which we want to control so to the plant there is a input or desired output which we are expecting from the plant then there is a output which is called as the actual output so this actual output will be fed back with the help of a feedback device so with this plus and minus sign there will be error signal and the objective of this controller is to minimize this error signal the output from the controller is called as the actuating signal which will be fed to the plant in order to control it so this is a typical block diagram of a closed loop control system which can be shown in a more generic way like where rs is known as the input and cs is known as the output of the system hs is called as the transfer function of the feedback device and we have seen that the transfer function of any second order system in closed loop control can be written like this omega n square upon s square plus 2 zeta omega n s and till now the there is no controller which means this block of controller is missing or you can say its value is taken as 1 so that is that we have seen in the last sessions where we have found out the response of the second order system to various kinds of inputs like step input ramp input impulse input and find out that how the system responds so now why we need a controller at this stage because we are not satisfied with the performance of the system alone so we need to modify we need to change we need to enhance the performance of the system so that's why we need a controller so which is not unity over here so we'll see different types of k depending upon the choice of the controller which we are going to use so then es over here is called as the error signal the es typically we will write it as the difference between the rs minus cs this is called as the error signal and eas the output from the controller it is called as the actuating signal next we will discuss the proportional control action where the actuating signal is proportional to the error signal which can be written like this way that e e a t is proportional to the error signal now in order to break this constant of uh, proportionality we will introduce one constant that k p into e t so this k p is called as the proportional gain now we can take the laplace transform so which can be written as e a s is equal to k p times e s and we can write the transfer function of the controller where e a s is the output to the controller and e s is the input so output by input ratio which is known as the transfer function of the controller is equal to k p so we can see the block diagram so here for the proportional controller this k p is the gain of the controller next we can calculate the transfer function of the forward path which can be written as gs is equal to kp into omega n square upon s square plus 2 zeta omega n s and hs is being unity over next we can calculate the steady state error which is given like this way es by rs is equal to 1 upon 1 plus gs hs where gs and hs we have calculated in the last slide so es in this case will be written as rs upon 1 plus gs hs rs upon 1 plus kp omega n square upon s square plus 2 zeta omega ns so which means rs into s square plus 
2 zeta omega n s that comes in the numerator and the denominator becomes s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus k p omega n square. So finally the steady state error can be written as as limit s goes to 0 s into e of s which is equal to limit s goes to 0 s into s square plus 2 zeta omega n s s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus k p omega n square into r s so we can take s common so which means e s is equal to limit s goes to 0 s square into s plus 2 zeta omega n into r s divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus k p omega n square now you can see the first case where the input is a step input which means r s is equal to 1 by s so the steady state error in this case limit s goes to 0 s square s plus 2 zeta omega n upon s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus k p omega n square and r s over here is 1 by s so s will cancel out and you can see there is one s in the numerator which under the limit will go to 0 so for the typical step input the steady state error for proportional control will be 0 and if we see r s is equal to 1 by s square which is you have the ramp input so in this case you can see the steady state error the whole expression into 1 by s square so both the s will cancel out so you will get under the limit 2 zeta omega n upon k p omega n square so omega n will cancel with this so you have 2 zeta by k p omega n and if we see the third case where r s is equal to 1 by s q which is the parabolic input so in this case the steady state error where limit s goes to 0 so the under the bracket remains the same 1 by s cube so here you can see 2 s will cancel out but there is 1 s will be there in the denominator so which will make the error to go to infinity so for the proportional control with parabolic input the steady state error will be infinite next comes the features of uh, proportional control action the first feature of a proportional controller is it is fast in nature because it is based on the instantaneous value of the error signal if the error is more the output from the controller is more if the error is less the output from the controller will be less as it is based on instantaneous error so it lives in the present which means it takes care of the current error in the system and we have seen that in the last slide for a ramp input it is bound to have a steady state error whose value is 2 zeta by k p omega n and if we want to have the steady state error to go to zero we have only one controlling parameter that is k p we can keep on increasing the value of k p but if you want the steady state error to go to zero which means the k p should go to infinity that is practically not possible because the controller gain is basically related to the motor torque and there is no motor in this real world which can provide infinite torque so which means that for a ramp input the proportional control is bound to have a finite error and the last feature of uh, this proportional control is that it does not counter static loading because as the error goes to zero the output from the controller is zero so if there is any kind of gravity loading the proportional controller is not able to handle this next comes the derivative control action where the actuating signal is proportional to the rate of change of error signal which means the actuating signal is now proportional to d by dt of the error in order to convert this inequality to quality we will introduce a constant which is known as kd and this is called as the derivative gain and if we take the Laplace transform we can write this as EAS KD and we know that the Laplace transform of a derivative is S times E of S 
so which means the transfer function for derivative controller is eas by es output by input is equal to s times kd next comes the steady state error in the case of a derivative control the derivative control is typically not used alone so we can calculate its uh, steady state error with the proportional control so that becomes a pd controller we will see that in the next session while discussing the pd controller now for that if we follow the similar steps we can see that the steady state error for the ramp input where rs is equal to 1 by s square the steady state error of the derivative controller will turn out to be the same as 2 zeta by kp omega n now here we can see the kd gain has no effect on the steady state error because it does not come into the picture at all so which shows that the derivative control action has no bearing on the steady state error next comes the features of a derivative control action because it is based on rate of change of error as the error goes to zero during the steady state let's say if we have something like this the step input and the response of the system is like this even if there is a steady state but the rate of change of error is zero during the steady state so there is no output from the controllers that's why the derivative control is rarely used alone and again we can see in the next session that the derivative control basically increases the effective damping of the system so while increasing the effective damping it basically reduces the oscillatory response or we can say it reduces the percent mp because we know that the percent mp is written as e raised per minus zeta pi upon 1 minus zeta square under root into 100 so as the value of uh, damping or the value of zeta increases the maximum percent overshoot reduces the derivative control is anticipatory in nature as it expects that something bad is about to happen so let's take a corrective action right now so it expects that a large error at the moment and accordingly it takes in the corrective action so that's why it lives in the future An example of this kind of uh, control action in real life is like lic policy where we keep on paying the lic premium by expecting that something bad is about to take in near future so let's take some corrective action so that uh, our families should remain safe the next feature is that the derivative controller has the tendency to yield high control signals when it experiences some high frequency errors because under the high frequency errors the rate of change of error is very high so it can lead to high control signals the next feature is it does not affect the steady state error as we have proved in the last slide and the last feature is again that it does not counter the static loading so these are the features of derivative control action next is the integral control action where the actuating signal is proportional to the integral of the error which can be written as eat is proportional to integral of the error so which means that it is based on the accumulation of the error from where the system starts to the time till now so we can break this inequality to equality by introducing a constant ki and now if we take the laplace transform you have eas for integral we know it is 1 by s and we can see that eas by es the transfer function of the controller is ki by s which can be shown in the block diagram like this way next comes the steady state error if we follow the same set of steps we can find out that the steady state error for a ramp input where the value of rs is equal to 1 by s square the steady state error which is equal to limit s goes to 0 s into es so this turns out to be 0 so that is the biggest advantage of using integral control action where for the proportional controller we have seen so this value is 2 zeta by kp omega n and this value is reduced to zero next comes the features of uh, integral controller the first feature is as it is based on the accumulation of error 
so it is slow in nature so the next is to accumulate error basically it keeps on the track of the history of the system so it is a looking back type so that's why we say that the integral controller lives in the past as mentioned in the last slide the integral control action reduces the steady state error which is its biggest advantage and it also counters the static loading to understand the static loading let's take the example of a robot which is supposed to do let's say this uh, welding job this is the desired trajectory of the welding in uh, cartesian space let's say we, there is a robot like this and let's say the actual trajectory being followed by the robot we can show it in uh, let's say uh, red so at a given instant you can see this is the error present in the system the difference between the desired and actual trajectory and as the error keeps on changing so there is error there is a rate of change of error is also there so let's assume that during some patch the robot follows the trajectory completely which means the error is zero and the rate of change of error is also zero which means that there is no output from the proportional controller and there is no output from the derivative controller if we use the proportional or the derivative control so here as there is no output from the controller the end effector of the manipulator will fall down and you can see the next instance there is error and you can say there will you can expect a something like a jerky motion in this case but due to the integral controller as it is based on the integral of the error so there is always a constant of integration which is involved but that constant of integration can be calculated to counter this static loading so which means even if there is zero error there is some amount of uh, output being given by the integral control so that is the second biggest advantage of the integral control action so in this session we have discussed about the three different control actions what are their significance importance and merits and demerits thank you